welcome to We The People. We were promised minimum government, maximum governance. Yet, in the last few years, it seems, as though through a combination of judicial and executive action at the state and central level, what we're getting is a culture of maximum infringement of personal liberties, from controlling what Indians eat and drink, watch or speak, from anti-Romeo squads to being told what to wear and how best to be patriotic, the government seems to be getting more intrusive as it enforces <coughs> Peti. Is the state playing a bigger role in our lives than we would like? Are we entering an age of moral policing where personal liberties count for little? And are there no governance issues that would be a better use of the state's time and energies. On We the People, we have today Vikramjeet Banerjee of the BJP, Shobha Oza of the Congress, Rahul Ishwar, author and activist, Sudha Pai, professor of political studies, professor of history, Rizwan Kezar, Sanjay Rajora, stand up comic, and joining us in Mumbai is Riaz Amlani. He's the president of the National Restaurant Association of India. Let's start first with you, Vikramjeet. Uh, this last week, we had the Hindu Yuva Vahini, whose chief, as you know, is the UP chief minister there. They barged into a private home and they dragged out this couple, consenting adults, and paraded them down the street to the local police station, right? And they got off lucky because in Jharkhand, we had a 19-year-old boy who died. He was killed. He was beaten to death after he was caught dropping off his girlfriend uh, home and they're from different religious communities. In a free country, one has the freedom to meet a partner. One has the freedom to meet a prospective partner in a public space. Are we still in a free country? No, we are in a free country. I don't think, see, I think the party is very clear and I think the government's view on this is very clear. Anyone who violates the law has to be prosecuted, has to be prosecuted in accordance with the law. As for the present context, whether who is responsible, what are the fact situation of the case, that will go to court and that will have subject to proof and I'm sure everybody around will have their defenses on that. But you said the law. In this case, this couple has been charged with obscenity in a public space. They were in a private home. I mean, you're a lawyer. Is this not an infringement on a civilian's uh, personal liberties? No, the, the two aspects of it. Number one, the first aspect of it is of course, if they, are, if they were not indulging in obscenity in a public space, uh, then of course they'll be, uh, you know, they'll have a right to defense and they'll, be, they'll have a right to prove that they were not indulging in and they were like falsely being prosecuted. But if they were, and I wasn't there, and I don't think there's any proof as to what they were actually doing. And, but if they were actually doing something, and I don't know whether they were doing or they were not doing, then in accordance with the law, the law will take its course. But is it too late for, for this woman, let's say, the Yuva Vahini, they say these moral self-appointed guardians of morality, they say they are looking out for a woman's dignity. What about her dignity? You look at these images of her being paraded down the street. She's trying to shield her face. People are clicking pictures of her on, on their phone. I mean, you may as well and just put on the scarlet letter, think, slap think, it on her. I think the government's view on that is very clear. Anyone who takes law into their own hands uh, will have to be prosecuted, whether it be the person who is whoever the person holds himself out to be. No one is above the law. <clears throat> so uh, we can sit here in air-conditioned <clears throat> studios and debate about whether this government is becoming totalitarian, but the fact is this. Anti-Romeo squads was an electoral promise. The ban on illegal slaughterhouses, that was also promised before the election, and the public has voted this government in unanimously, overwhelmingly they voted in. in. So what are we even, even debating here? Actually, here's a government that has delivered on an electoral promise. <laughs> See, this was, uh, the, the electorate did not know that this would be moral policing. This would be barging into one's bedrooms and kitchens and like what not. So people did not vote for this. What they promised anti-Romeo squad was against the victimization or criminalization of women to give protection to women. But is this giving protection to women? You're saying people did not vote this for this. Let's ask Mohammad Ali. You're a reporter with the Hindu and you've reported extensively from UP, right? Shobha Uta says the people did not vote for this. But the this Yuva moral policy says, was not expected. No, but the Yuva Vahini says in its defense that they were given a tip-off in this case by, by the neighbors. So they say the public wants this. You've reported on the ground. What's yeah, the I, reality? I, I think, so. see, look, let's be very, very practical and clear. The, you know, uh, I'll give you one example, that this news story of Yuva Vahini guys barging in and dragging this couple out was on the front pages of English newspapers in Delhi. 
but it was a side story in in hindi papers in in up what do you, what do you make of it because they see the people the hindu middle class in up uh, does you know wants this these kinds of thing it has become increasingly hindu i'm really sorry to say I, and and hindu yuva vahini guys are they're right they were not there to uh, you know they hadn't gone there to uh, to do this they were they're, they're part of hanuman some puja thing they were informed by local uh, people in shastri vihar uh and then it's it's after locals complains and and you know locals were like saying some suspicious activity is going on uh so i mean i'm i i would not say that uh, people didn't vote for this you wouldn't say people didn't vote for the rahul ishwar and you're smiling now he, he he says the public the the public wants this but is it the government's job to do whatever the public wants the public may also want uh, you know to do <coughs> sex test to to then abort a female child sir i want you can either be politically correct or you can be politically honest let me be politically honest i am a hindu right winger but let me quote a secular congress christian chief minister of kerala sri ummanjandi he says on the floor of the house not on a press meet that more than 2667 conversions in the context of love jihad and forcible conversions took place see this is a reality that many people face and the temple where my marriage took place the granddaughter of the trustee is right now in syria fighting for isis see you can either cover this up or you can talk it about openly and please remember we are not against any community but there is an angle of forced conversion going on and no, no. sasi rightly said the hindu middle class is maybe overreacting nobody disagrees but even gandhi ji's son was given money and was converted the greatest secular icon okay, of so india is okay, okay, sorry, so sorry. please remember so there is a reaction okay, coming so they, rahul they one second hold on in any relationship religion, in any relationship couples may be deceived right guys are usually inflating how much they earn what kind of job they have women are also deceitful there was a case of a man who divorced his wife the day after their marriage when he saw her for the first time without makeup the point is this i don't want to i don't want to trivialize the matter what can hold on one minute my point is this the point don't is this can the police issue. act unless a complaint has been we launched filed? absolutely a complaint should be launched i concede his point that there may be the hindu middle class may be overreacting but please remember all these vigilant so called vigilant groups are reacting they are reacting to a particular situation and just imagine the plight of a particular they they the what is the government's law? job what are we saying should we saying that on every date we should take a policeman the, on every honeymoon the government's job is so they can verify the what, government job what is the not to close their eyes the and place pseudo sexual risk but to be open about no, these issues the and address these issues and over law and, and, and shobha ji will over and because i'm calling umman chandi sir her chief minister no no my chief See, this is the one minute you can even point that nothing is happening it's not about hindu Minister, Rahul, Rahul, one second. Rahul, is it is law about. Order, the can we hand over hand the law to the goons? Absolutely. Another See, these people, these people are, these people are, are not goons. These people, when they they may be overreact to the news no, they hear on the are, channel, when they when the they right realize into that one bedroom. of their sisters who was with them yesterday, and you you should also remember one more thing: the particular girl in Syria fighting for ISIS, her brother is in NSG. So the family overreacts, and right now the, they are the CPM family. I mean, they are a communist family. They went to meet the comrade chief minister. Can we talk Indra about Vijay. UP? So please, please remember. Can see, we talk about why? Can no, you come over to UP? I, I want to stay, stay, stay on topic. Maybe overreacting, but Rahul, please don't. Answer the question the about this. Answer the question about this case, and let's move on. Similarly, the RSS chief he wants a nationwide ban on cow slaughter, which is in contrast. to cooperative federalism which the prime minister has promised the bjp ruled gujarat has a new law that awards a life term to anyone slaughtering a cow in chatisgarh the chief minister threatens to hang cow killers the alabad high court last week ruled that food and food habits are connected to the right of life and livelihood guaranteed under article 21 of the constitution but in india today it seems it is easier to get away with rape and killing someone while driving drunk rahul after his magnificent victory even though he did not run on his name the up chief minister has basically he's made his priorities clear he says it is anti romeo squads and the meat ban right are there no other priorities in india's largest state very okay. true just two points that's reason but answer the question maybe i can tone it down and sugar coat it when i come to delhi the reality is even the first war of indian independence was started in the name of a cow Mangal Pandey shot his fire in the name of the no cow. Are there no other priorities for the chief minister topic. of the Lahore? Yes, just give me one line. No, 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 answer no, no, the no, question, Rahul. Just show me one second. Just show me one second. No, no, Rahul, answer the question. Rahul, it should be Rahul. This is not rigid. Okay, I want to clarify one thing. I'm sorry. One minute. Will you all show me? See, I, I said that he has been like that. He will not stop. Just let me complete one line. 
Article so, 48 of Indian Constitution. Why you won't ban Northeast? You won't ban. Please, please Wherever listen to what I'm saying. For words, See, you Article 48 of Indian Constitution. Just two lines. Can we ignore cultural sensitivities? Second, Article 48 of Indian Constitution. Even the great Baba Sahib Ambedkar has put it. But I, we all agree that you cannot I take it beyond a board. But having said but that, can you have double standards? Can you have double standards? That point. Tell me that point. One minute, Shubha. One second. Rahul, I'm going back to my question. Are there no other priorities in a state like? UP, there is so much unemployment in UP. Perhaps the point is, if there weren't so much unemployment, who would be in this Yuvavahini? Maybe you need unemployment no, 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 in order to keep that's membership that's up that's in, that's in groups that's like that's the Yuvavahini. Answer the question then. This will get clapped in Delhi, but never in UP. When you go to no, UP no, and, UP. and UP. see this, answers we clap for this. Call, call it cow bells, no. call it Hindi, Hindu bells, Police but there is sensitivity. The only thing we have to deal with, and Gandhiji went to the extent of saying that cow production is as important as national freedom. But he so said, a at the same sentiment. time, you can't be selective. He said, killing people in the name of cow that's true, that's true. Uh, protection uh, cannot be justified. Let's Please, talk about, not pick let's talk about, here. let's talk about what the priorities are in UP. Should the chief minister be looking at uh, issues like unemployment, at the economy? We have uh, Mr. Zakir here. He's Zakir ji is the owner of a meat shop in Aligarh. His family has been doing this for generations and his license has not been renewed. license renew kyun License कल आइए परसों आइए टेलीविजन दिन सारे कागज लिए प्रोग्राम में चौथी दिन से चौथी दिन दिल पे उनको ऑफिस है चला नहीं जाता वहाँ पर बुलाते हैं बार बार कई बार सारे अस्पताल के भी काम करा लिए सारे काम चुंगी के भी करा लिए बराबर वो लहसन नहीं बनाते तो कान खोलते तो पुलिस वाले आ जाते उस तो तो पांच सौ रुपए लेके चले जाते हैं तो काम चल रहा है आज कल चल रहा है काम बनते हैं तो आपका घर कैसे चल रहा है ऐसे चल रहा है आपसे ले लिया इनसे ले लिया पेट भर रहे क्या करें बताइए आप तो कितने लोग एम्प्लॉय कर रखते थे मतलब मेरे पांच बच्चे पांचों को दुकानें खुलवा दी है मैंने पहले एक दुकान थी मेरे पास एक लाइसेंस था अब पांच खुलवा दूं उनका लाइसेंस बनेगा नहीं बनेगा वो नहीं बना के दे रहे लाइसेंस भागवत जी आएंगे उस दिन से परेशानी परेशानी बढ़ रही है और ऐसे तो पीएम से डी प्राइम मिनिस्टर सो वी हैड so the Prime Minister promised less red tape. He said there would be no longer be a license raj. There seems to be a different license, a license raj of a different Sare sort in, ne, in, in UP, UP right now. Fawzan Alavi, Fawzan Alavi is the director of, uh, he's on the board of the world's, you say, it's the world's biggest halal meat company, or certainly Asia's biggest halal meat company. So certainly something the business industry should be proud of in India. At a global summit in 2015, the Prime Minister said, I believe that government has no business in business, and there should be minimum government, but maximum governance. Are you getting what he promised? In a country like ours, where decades after independence, we have not been able to provide basic drinking water, basic education, basic health to a common man. When we talk about Sabka Saas, Sabka Vikas, 125 crore, so when there is no clean water, okay, then where, which road do we actually want to travel? Okay, what are the priorities of any government, be it BJP, Congress, Samajwadi, BSP, anybody? Okay, now, so what happens when BJP comes into power, they say Samajwadi did not do it. Samajwadi says BSP did not do it. BSP says Congress did not do it. Okay, Congress can go to Lord Mountbatten. No, no, I'm talking but, about this government. Yeah, this no, government no. made a promise, ease of business. Ease of business, you see, he, he's an example of ease of doing business. The gentleman sitting next to you, it's not only a big corporate has to have the ease of doing business. Ease of doing business is for is a right for every common man, every big man, everybody who's doing this. So the so PM's th promise of ease of business was only for foreign firms? No, I, I, I would not like to comment on that. But somehow I feel, you know, Prime Minister Modi has a lot of good ideas. But it is taking time to get it implemented on the, on the shop floor. Like we met uh, Chief Minister uh, Yogi, he promised all help. Okay. Why did you meet Chief Minister Yogi? No, because, you know, we, th there was a sword hanging, uh, you know, on us. We did not know whether we're coming or we're going. Okay. And what did he say? No, he says the law is equal for us. You know, the party, uh, you know, this not the party's government and it's, it belongs to everybody. But still some factories are closed. Okay, still the shopkeepers are not getting the licenses. And now, secondly, what happens is this whole talk about illegal, uh, illegal slaughterhouses. Illegal slaughterhouses are not the responsibility of a particular company. These are, these are the responsibility of the government. So unfortunately, the government is calling their own slaughterhouses illegal. Okay, so if you go to a town planning act or Nagarma Palika act, depending on the size and the population of a particular city, there has to be a provision for a slaughterhouse. Okay, to cater to the local uh, masses. Now they're all there on the paper. 
but last 20 years 25 years they're defunct they, they they're the chief medical officer has to be part of it the veterinary officer anti-mortem post-mortem all these things have to be done <coughs> but nobody has bothered nobody has looked into it and this is the result now the bjp government you know should handhold the common man like him okay and see him through this like an elder brother what Help, kind of handholding do they need handholding uh, facilitate uh, the licensing okay Give him no, but if they're illegal and they're not supposed to be no, there, why shouldn't so, they be shut down? No, they should be shut down in the sense because there is no, there's no place uh, for them to go and slaughter or, 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 or do the dressing of an animal. Okay, now it is the responsibility of the government to give them a place. Now Supreme Court, NGT, everybody is talking about. Supreme Court has said that give them an alternate and then shut it down. So there was no alternate given to these poor people. Okay, I'm not talking about the export house. Export house is a state of the art. We deal with export. So, just clarify, is export also affected or is it only the it's, locals? Uh, uh, big time. And how, how much of an exporter is India? <clears throat> oh, we are, we are does this affect our economy? Does it add to our GDP? Uh, uh, it does. See, th this, this year we would have done $5 billion of exports and this is all buffalo meat. So buffalo meat is still affected, even uh, though this see, is gaurakshar. See, see, the reason why it is affected is the mandis are shut. The farmers are, sh uh, are not... Uh, risking their lives to carry the livestock to the markets because somebody is getting lean, somebody is getting threatened and unfortunately what has happened is the Gaur Rakshas have become Buffalo Rakshas. Okay, so they are taking, you know, I will give you an example. One of our vendors, he was ca carrying 10 male buffaloes in his truck. Yeah. Okay, the, he was stopped and they say, yeah, they, these are milching. So he said, you are male. Where mm. can this milching ho sakte hai? But then he was thrashed, he was taken money and then he was let go. So this is, this is the kind of things happening. So, so money is taken from them. You're saying these, this is see, just like see, stealing, highway I, robbery. I think this, the, the whole, uh, you know, uh, Rakshak uh, concept Brigade. And, and a lot of, you know, a lot of these animal activists, this, this is a very glorified job of an extortion.